Welcome back to today's anatomy question. I'm still Lizzie Lassiter. Teaching us today, smiling with us, uplifting us is the wonderful Mary Richards. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lizzie. Thank you for being here with us. Today, we're talking about bony landmarks of the torso, the upper body, the rib cage. I thought what we would do is look at pocket anatomy, the visualization, Mary, and you can show us what we're going to feel on the body, and then we can feel the same spots on our body. Great. Great. Okay. But, but before we do, I want to show you the websites that are important. This is Mary's website. It's Yoga with Mary Richards. That's where you can find everything Mary. And I hope you are signed up for our newsletter, which you can find at experientialanatomy.yoga. I just realized I have the wrong card right here. I have the lizzie.yoga card, which is my website. Experientialanatomy.yoga is the place to go. And I want to share one last thing, Mary's new book that you must know about and you must order <laughs> because you must have it on your bookshelf, Teach People Not Poses, Lessons in Yoga Anatomy and Functional Movement to Unlock Body Intelligence. It's a tremendous book, encyclopedic. <laughs> but I tried to be thorough yet accessible. Absolutely. Well, you absolutely managed that goal. Let's go to Pocket Anatomy now. Let me share my screen and tell us what bony landmarks we're going to be looking for today. Okay. So the rib cage is a really interesting structure. You know, a lot of us uh, understand that it protects our heart and our lungs in particular. It also shelters our kidneys and some of the spleen, the stomach, the pancreas, the liver, the gallbladder. Uh, but the fascinating thing too about the rib cage is its relationship to our respiratory uh, efficiency, you know, how easily and deeply we breathe. We want a lot of mobility actually in our rib cage, uh, to facilitate comfortable, easy breath. And so we want to get to know our ribs and, and our breastbone and also our shoulder blades, because these all are related along with the collarbones to our actual rib cage mobility, which affects our ability to fill and empty our lungs. Okay. Mm. So what we're looking at on pocket anatomy is we're looking at an anterior view of the rib cage, the chest area. And do you notice the lighter colored uh, structures that are coming into the dagger like breastbone in the center of the chest, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. Let me just draw a little bit and orient people. So here's the breastbone. Yes. And then you're talking about these structures. Yes. Yeah, so those are the cartilaginous uh, uh, and connective tissue attachments that attach the ribs to the breastbone. And when you look at the rib cage, what do you notice uh, about the ribs? Mm. I guess I noticed that they are, um, it looks like it's kind of built for flexibility in that these connections are all softer than bone. Well, that gives us mobility, yes, but also notice that, so we have 12 ribs on each side of the body. Most of us have 12 ribs on each side of the body, not everyone, but when you look at the cartilaginous structures in relationship to the breastbone, perhaps you notice that really only the first seven ribs mm -hmm. are directly attached to the breastbone. Mm -hmm. And then the ribs below number seven are attached to one another mm -hmm. and then the breastbone. And so the ribs are, the rib cage is actually divided into uh, different categories of ribs. You know, we have the so-called true ribs, which attach directly to the breastbone. Then we have mm -hmm. the floating ribs, seven, eight, nine, 10, which attach to one another and attach to the breastbone. And then mm -hmm. on the back of the body, we have what are called false ribs, number 11 mm -hmm. and 12. And they are, they articulate only with the vertebral column at mm -hmm. T11 and T12. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty interesting when you think about this, uh, because we might have a sense that all the ribs are kind of on the same level. But why we want to know this is the shape of the rib cage gives us a really idea of how the vertebral column receives movement and how the shoulders move. So if we look again at the front of the body, let's start with the breastbone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we just take our fingers and we just feel the center of the chest, you're going to feel this, this bony plate Mm -hmm. and you, you can on yourself, you know, getting around your clothes and other soft tissue structures on the front of your body, work your way down toward those floating ribs. You'll find kind of where the ribs no longer feel like they directly attach to the breastbone. Yeah, you feel that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what you're feeling then is you're feeling ribs seven. And I like to call the seven and eight, I like to call those the eyes of the rib cage. And they give us a really good idea of how we're carrying the weight of the rib cage and the shoulders, the arms and the head in the body. Mm -hmm. So in any given moment, moment, any given moment, are those eyes of the ribs jutting forward, Mm -hmm. meaning we're squeezing our shoulder blades together and lifting the chest and thinking about standing up straight Mm -hmm. or, or are those eyes of the ribs, are they gently floating up and down with the movements of the breath? We want to know this because it gives us an idea of how much tension folks are holding through their shoulder girdle, as well as in their bellies. You with me? Yeah. And as you're talking, I'm thinking about how important the rib cage is to look at in yoga students because they're so individual, actually. There's a huge variation in the shape of people's rib cages. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Some folks have deep rib cages too and wide rib cages and then now let's take our hands so we've got the visual of the ribs on each side of the body we found the eyes of the ribs just take your hands and place them low on your rib cage above your you know above your waist and below um the armpits and just notice does one side of your rib cage feel wider than the other I'd say my left actually, but it seems like it should be the right because of the heart, but my left feels a little bit bigger. Okay. So now you have an idea of any sort of functional scoliotic overlays that are occurring in your vertebral column to help you, you know, deal with the load in your life. Mm -hmm. Cause that when one side, so my, I'm the opposite. My right is a bit wider than my left. You know, when I look at this measurement, this very precise scientific measurement, uh, because I have a slight scoliosis, a right thoracic, which means I'm side bent a little to the left and rotated slightly to the right. Mm -hmm. And you're probably the opposite. And that could be in your lumbar. It could be in your thoracic. So it just gives us an idea of Huh, what's the pattern in my body? And then I can look at myself in the mirror and, oh, is one shoulder higher than the other? Because by getting to know these, these bony features of the rib cage, it can tell us a lot about what's happening in our shoulders and in our low backs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if we pull up now pocket anatomy again, Lizzie, mm-hmm. and let's take a look again at the breastbone and Perhaps you notice that the breastbone isn't a solid, a solid piece of bone. Like the rib cage, it also has segments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're at the, the proximal mm-hmm. uh, breastbone, and that's called the manubrium, which means handle. Mm-hmm. And then we have the sternal body, mm-hmm. which is like the dagger's blade. I mean, the, the sternum looks like a dagger. And then we have this little tip this dagger's tip called the xiphoid process Mm -hmm. and um it has a little bit of movement to it but this is important to look at because see we know the diaphragm is attached there so we can see looking at the rib cage we get a sense a really beautiful visual sense of the parachute like dome of getting to pop in there it is there it is uh 
of the diaphragm. You can see how that follows the profile, uh, the configuration of the rib cage. And it's just really important for us to be aware of that. So mm -hmm. when you look at this, it gives you an idea of why, for instance, we don't want to bend in forward folds in particular at T12 and L1 because mm -hmm. it's right at the diaphragm. So it's going to affect mm -hmm. our ability to breathe. So now if we uh, feel the breastbone again on ourselves, just mm -hmm. notice where do you feel that little transitional ridge between the body of the breastbone and the handle, the upper handle of the breastbone? Yeah, I can't find that. I feel this notch at the top. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's start at the sternal notch. That's where the collarbones, the clavicles are coming into the breastbone. This is a, an important bony landmark, actually. And then you just feel down a little bit. It might be a little uncomfortable, so don't press too hard. And you'll eventually come to a spot where it, it kind of moves in a little bit. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Everything's a little different. Not a huge landmark. I just want us to be aware that right there where the manubrium meets the sternal body, well, behind that is a lot of fantastic uh, physiologic action and um, organs there. And particularly right about in this area, we've got the pulmonary trunk where the lungs are connecting to the heart. So hand over the heart. Not down here, right up here. <laughs> okay. Just good to know, right? When mm -hmm. we think of the heart center so that we have a, you know, a location in the body that's a bit more precise. And then we feel up a bit more into that sternal notch. And then you might need both hands and feel those bony knobs. Those are the medial ends of the collarbones. And they roll up and down vis-a-vis -vis the manubrium. They're rolling up and down. When we inhale, they roll up a bit. And when we exhale, they relax down. This And this rotation, now let's take our fingers and follow along the collarbones. This rotation occurs through the length of the collarbones. It's not a huge movement, but it's key. Mm -hmm. So uh, lots of us actually, when we're doing chest openers and things, we also need to do some specific stuff to stretch around our collarbones so that we have more freedom in our upper ribs. Mm -hmm. So we keep feeling out. Yeah, keep working your fingers out towards your shoulder, Lizzie. And what do you notice as you get above your arm? The top of the yeah, shoulder. then it gets bonier and bonier. <laughs> yeah, and you feel like a roof or a ledge, yes? Like a little hook on, yeah. Yes, yes. So this is called the acromium process. And this is the roof of the shoulder. And under this bony roof lies, well, a bunch of vascular structures and nervous system structures. They actually traverse through something called the thoracic outlet right under the collarbone in front of the shoulder and the rotator cuff, the most battered aspect of the rotator cuff, which is four muscles, the supraspinatus lies under that roof. So this was something shocking, embarrassingly shocking to me when I started learning experiential anatomy and working learning more anatomy with you Mary is that I never really thought of the sh shoulder joint as having anything to do with the clavicle like I just thought like okay this is the front chest and then this is the shoulder joint and they <laughs> somehow so let's look here because I think this view is really interesting if we look at the cranial view yes. then this is what we were just feeling the this is the clavicle coming and then yeah. this is them connecting. So this yes. joint, which I never really thought about is actually like a key part of the shoulder joint that can get injured in yoga, that can get injured in life and then come it onto the yoga mat and be dysfunctional. And what right? we're seeing now from this um, cranial view, it's so we worked out along the collarbone. We got, you know, uh, to the distal end of the collarbone and it's really hard to kind of feel where the collarbone meets the acromion. It's called the acromioclavicular joint. There is a little joint there. We can see it very clearly from this top view. And then we hop onto the acromion. But if you kind of play with your arm position a bit, you'll be able to feel 
that tiny little joint between the end mm -hmm. of the collarbone and the acromion, which again, that's actually part of your shoulder blades. Exactly. See, that's what's so, it's like the three-dimensionality of it, that the shoulder yeah. joint is actually made up of this, the clavicle, then the top of the shoulder blade that comes up and over. And then now we're looking at the humerus, right? Yep. The this head is of the that, humerus, which we this, can feel. No, okay. Like you topic. can, you can feel yeah. this, uh, knobby lateral condyle of the humeral head, the top of your arm bone. Cause it's, you can see looking at it, there's not a lot of coverage. It's not like the hip joint where the head of the femur is it, it encircled by the acetabulum. You know, that's mm -hmm. truly a ball and socket joint uh, or a multi-axle diarthrosis for the nerds out there. Okay. okay. And the shoulder is also classified as a ball and socket joint, but we can see that the socket it's very is, shallow. is very shallow and it's, it's co-created, if you will, um, to a certain degree with the collarbones, but it's primarily formed by the shoulder blades. Yeah. And this, uh, if we just bring in a little more detail, we can see that actually this joint is really held together by the all the muscles and like really this move, boom, we yeah. see how the shoulder joint really starts to, all right. What other things would you like us to feel? Bony landmarks should we feel in the upper body? So we, so this is for the front body. You know, I just want us to know the kind of the landmarks of the front of the rib cage, the breastbone and the collarbones, because again, that gives us an idea of what's happening in the thoracic spine. And it gives us an idea of what could be going on in the shoulders. And then we'd want to turn our attention to the bony landmarks of the back. Uh, because there are all of these different landmarks on the back body. And those are actually in some ways um, more relevant to shoulder movement. But it's just important that we understand that the collarbones are not like throwaway bones. <laughs> okay. And nor are the ribs, nor mm -hmm. are the ribs. These bony landmarks, especially if you have tenderness, when you feel the ends of your collarbones, where they come into the breastbone, or you have tenderness where the ribs come into the breastbone, you can kind of feel that, right? Mm hmm Give yourself a little love there, you know, use a, a little ball, a pinky ball and rub along those connections. Okay. There's all beneath there. There's all kinds of lymphatic structures. And, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're a little congested, having seasonal allergies or uh, upper respiratory infection, this can help relieve some of the discomfort related to any sort of, um, you know, mucus buildup. Okay. Okay. Great. So anything else for this video or shall we say goodbye? I think that's good. That's very good. Thank you so much, Mary Richards. I'll give the websites one more time. This is yoga with Mary Richards.com. This is where you should go to find out everything that Mary is up to. And then this says Lizzie.yoga, but it should say experiential anatomy.yoga, which if you type into your browser, you will find our free newsletter for lots of fun yoga nerd anatomy content. And we do hope that you will buy Mary's wonderful book, Teach People Not Pose. Yes. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you, Lizzie.